It's my sin. It's my sin. You gotta understand that anytime God enables you to believe again, anytime God allows you the opportunity to say, but you know, I'm gonna trust God when you were getting ready to throw in the towel and walk away, that you have faith to believe God when you're getting ready to say, I don't see anything happening. Anytime God breaks through in your life and blesses you with a new experience to say that I trust God. Yeah. It is because God is trying to get a message across to you that what's in your future is going to look better than what's in your past. That what you're getting ready to achieve is better than any experience you've ever had on yesterday. And what he's saying to you and I is you've got to learn how to let go of that so you can have this. Hallelujah. The problem is people get stuck.
church is, is that if you have new wine, you cannot take the new wine and put it in an old rigid wine skin. I've got to keep in mind, bottling wasn't around back then. <laughs> so they took the animal skin, the cowhide, sewed it together, stitched it in, glued it up, and then they used that as our bottles of today. And you would pour a new wine, which has a lot of agility to it. it has a lot of oomph to it. Some folk can't deal with that <clears throat> to you. <laughs> God is taking and changing the character and the condition of that new wine by putting it inside of a skin that can handle it. I want to suggest to you that the skin God gave you can handle the new wine God's going to put in you. But you got to do something about how you think about what God is doing in the midst of your life. Because what, what God is going to say to you is that how you put new wine in a new wine skin, it starts in your The devil does not have to put you in handcuffs and lock you up if you can lock your mind. You can take a slave and tell him he is free, but if he still thinks he's in bondage, he will not step off the reservation. The plantation, I'm sorry. If you have a gate open, no locks, nowhere, and your whole, everybody is gone. He will sit there and wait till you come back. Because he's still in prison in his mind. So how do you stop the process? Let me say, how do you stop this process? How do you stop this process? Let me ask a question. I don't want to just talk just to talk because maybe you know you don't want to know. Is there anybody here want to know about? Talk about. Think about it. <laughs> How do you stop the process? <laughs> I, I, I knew that that's how I would put that mic back real quick, real quick. <laughs> wow. I want to know just two hours. <laughs> we will help chase the four hours. <laughs> I love you, DJ. <laughs> Put new wine in old wine skins. I want to tell somebody here today that the devil is a liar in your life. You need to kick him out. You need to kick him out. He's telling you that you can't do what God called you to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's telling you you're a failure and you're a father. You are more than a conqueror. The only reason why you are a failure is because failures are only people who fail to get up after falling. That's the difference between a conqueror and a failure. It's only the person who fails to get up. Tell your neighbor, get up. Yeah. I'm gonna talk to you about that no more. Get up. I'm not gonna buy no Volkswagen. Get up. I know some of y'all might like it, and it's all right. I'm talking with the bug. <laughs> they had to redo it because some people are so nostalgic. Oh, no, don't get rid of the beetle. <laughs> so they redid it. I'm not going to buy any books like you need them. They embarrass to get a target. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies and living sacrifice only unto God, which is a reasonable act of worship. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. The first thing you got to do is get your mind up. How dare you go to school and flunk out? Get your mind up. Mm -hmm. Why are 
you going to go through the process and do all that and not commit to studying and doing what you need to do to better yourself? Get your mind up and don't settle for a C unless you're just a C student. Come on, preach. I got to go here. I, I, I talked with Shatia and Brother Daniel last weekend, actually a few weeks before here, and they told me Shatia, and I got it straight from the horse's mouth. Shatia, who struggled in high school, is on the dean's list. Come on. Come on. said, I went there and I said to them, give me two days of classes. They said, that's not what we normally do. We normally put the classes on. She said, I understand, but I need two days of classes. I want all my classes on two days. And she goes to school for two days a week. And she's committed to studying and doing everything here on those two days plus the extra day. And she said, it works for me. Hallelujah. You got to get out of the mindset that I got to do things the way it's always been done. For something the Bible says, ask and it shall be. <laughs> Girls on the dean's list. Amen. You gotta be new. You might work at McDonald's today. You give me five years, I'm gonna own my McDonald's. You think I just show up here and do all the things here because I'm just a good employee? Oh, no, no, no. I got plans. Come on. Oh, I got plans. I got, plans. I, got plans. I, I got big plans for the drink. Big plans. It's the renewing of your mind. So I'm not mad at folk who dream big. Oh, I, I, got, I got plans, Pastor. I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm not mad at you. I think you should aspire and aspire to do your level best and never settle for anything less and get out of your place of comfort and stop telling, letting folk tell you what you cannot do. Amen. So if one of the things here when you want to be a water walker is stop listening to the people in the boat. <laughs> stop listening to folk in the boat. They're not doing anything. So you gotta ask God to clear the clutter in your mind. Mind bogged down with a whole lot of stuff, stuck in the season, stuck in the year, stuck in the day, stuck in the place, stuck in the position there, and you got so much stuff that every time you try to think about doing something, all the clutter is all in front of you. You can't do nothing because every time you try to think, you got too much stuff blocking you. And you need to ask God, clear the clutter in my mind, God. Clutter is all the stuff that folk put on you. All the stuff you put on you. All the stuff the devil put on you. I'm telling you, it's a new season. I'm not going into my new season with all that old clutter. You got to take to yourself, you know what? In this new season, I'm not going to walk in guilt. I'm not going to walk in, in, in bondage. I'm not going to walk in unforgiveness. In this new season, that stuff cannot come with me. Stay back. I know. Trash day is Thursday. Amen. The only thing I have is a bag of garbage. It's going out. I wish I had about four people who were just in the spirit, just picking up a bag of garbage. I, I, I saw some of y'all house y'all got a little bit. <laughs> I'm not restricted, I'm not limited, I have 
no fear. What could you really do if you dare believe that God is able to cause all grace to abound? Then now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all, we can ask for thing. The problem is you won't even ask. Joshua was down in New York here for the Macy's Parade. And so he said, Dad, I need some money to spend. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> so said, well, how much money do you need to do this, son? You know, your, your, your trip wasn't cheap. And the airline was not cheap, and the hotel was not cheap, and how much money do you think you need? He gave me a figure. Let's say come again, son. <laughs> and the more we conversed and went back and forth, his figures increased. I said to him, I said, this is not the art of negotiation. This is not how it's supposed to work. We're supposed to come down and meet somewhere in the middle. Your, your numbers are not supposed to increase the more we talk. You know, I'm supposed to start out over here, and you start out over there, and we come in the middle somewhere, and you're doing this thing wrong. We're talking here, and, and you started out here, and now your number goes up there. That, that's not how negotiation goes. He said, well, Daddy, I need such and so-and-so. I need to do this. And so we talked some more, and his number increased again. <laughs> I figured out I was losing. <laughs> and so he gave me another number, and another thing. And the problem is, I said to my sons, you can always, we'll sit down and discuss and have a conversation, and I'll give you a great chance to give you a debate, and if you can prove your point, then most times you'll win, but if you can't prove your point, then you know what, it's just a decision that we make, and once we come to that decision, that's the decision, but if you can give me a strong enough argument, then we have to figure out how we're going to make this thing happen. He gave me a compelling argument. <laughs> So we gave him his request. <laughs> now we laugh, but the reality of it is, is I use that to say to you that, you know what, what sense is the help of God who is our Father? Who has the earth as the Lord's and the fullness of the earth, the world that we that dwell are in. We don't even have a, we don't even have a faith that doesn't come to us. We don't even ask. Don't even ask. says, not only am I going to ask, but when I get in conversation, I will raise the bar. I'm loving something right about now. I got to start asking, oh, hold on now. But you don't even ask. We sing this all, my father is rich in houses and land. But you don't ask. You're walking through, living through an area in life without heaven because you don't ask. When the Bible says it is your father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom, but you don't ask. You still trying to put new wine in old wine skins. What he's saying is I need to change the way you think so that you can get a new mind so you can ask me for what? because if I didn't tell you it was coming, you wouldn't believe it when it showed up. So God has told me to come here and tell you on this first day here in December that there's a new thing that's coming into your life. Now I'm telling you, you won't get out of church and start seeing a new thing. On Monday morning, there's a new thing coming. But if I didn't warn you, you wouldn't believe it. You would say, it was a clap clap to me for me. Tell your neighbor, it's my season. It's my season. It's my season.
for your kids to do better than you. But you don't have faith enough to believe God can do good in your life. Come on, Pastor. Now, you who have limitations can believe that my children are going to do better than I. Anybody believe that? Let me see here. I thought so. So how in the world is you to believe that your kids can do better than you will do? But you don't have a good enough faith to believe that God can help your life to be better than what it currently is. Yes. Process starts in your mind. Empty yourself of fear and limitations. You know why the reason why most folk don't accomplish anything is because they are afraid. Or they're standing under somebody else's doubts. What sense does it make for me to stand under your doubt? Live my life under your disbelief? Why am I living my life under your fears? Something different. <laughs> Stand in your feet. 